Okay, so now that that whole thing's done and we haven't forgotten a gear like I did before, I don't know if this is as important or not. While much of the scroll is faded, one part still stands out, and in the end the evil shall be thrice defeated and thrice returned. The first shall rise a warder to bar the gates from opening, the second shall raise one of the carefree to travel the path of the luck. The last shall raise a raven to remake what was undone. The letter is signed by Gabriel and crew includes a glyph which shows four vertical lines of varying height. You can make of that what you will. I already know what that's for, but in case you want to play the game and solve the riddles yourself, I'm not going to explain it. Because I'm a nice guy. I want you to have a replay value and without explaining every last riddle to you. Okay, so. Obviously that was not too terribly important though, so... That's a door up there. I don't know if you can see that, but we're opening it. We're going. Haha, <laughs> now we're making progress. And no, folks, we were not in Castle Shadowgate. We have not even gotten into Sh Castle Shadowgate. This is the castle. We've just been before the castle this whole time. So what's the first thing we're going to do? Of course, we're going to climb into the well just because. <laughs> you grab hold the rope and carefully lower yourself down into the well. The ancient wells choke with roots and various detritus and, de and debris that has accumulated over the years. Okay. With a cluster of seeds near its crown, the leafy green plants top with a bud that has yet to bloom. Okay. Sections of thick metal are sewn onto a rough leather glove, creating excellent protection and reinforcement. We want that glove. Or gauntlet. We take the gauntlet. We want to use that gauntlet on ourselves. You squeeze your hand into the metal gauntlet. Good. And we want... You put the plant into your satchel. We want that plant. I'm pretty sure. Actually, I don't know if we want that plant or not, but I've been going and taking it anyway. Because it's probably important. Okay. Not unlike the image in your dreams, the entrance to the inner keep of Castle Shadowgate stands before you. This is why you went down there before, because we're going to. We're, we want that rope. You struggle to untie the rope from the well. Finally, the last stubborn knot comes free and the rope falls to the ground. We want that rope. Why did we want that rope? It's pretty obvious. I mean, look what we have in our inventory. We have a frickin' hook, and now we have a rope. Put two together, and there you go. Use that on a window. I don't think it matters whichever window, but... Displaying an expertise you did not know you possessed, you swing the grappling hook in about your head a few times and let it fly. The hook catches in the window slit of the castle wall. Go! Oh, and for people wondering, uh, that third, gra that third, uh, gear solution, I believe, lowered the water in the moat. If you had not done that, I don't think you could have climbed up here. The room is dry as a bone and apparently houses the mechanism that raises and lowers the drawbridge. A hum of power travels along the machinery. Earth. You swap the lever with your open hand. With the rumble, the chains move and the gears begin to turn. So now that we lowered the drawbridge, again, I'm going to do the old-fashioned save and look at this stuff for you guys. You read the words on the scroll, noting it's a letter addressed to the wizard Greylord. My friend, I will remain secure in my demence, here in the Gatekeeper Mountains, guarding the northern passage. Look for my signal pyre. If more come from the north, I regret that I must bring my most formidable pet with me, since only I can control it. The name Unthalm is signed as a flourish at the bottom of the page. Okay, so, let's get going. You hurl yourself headfirst out the window. Luckily, you smack the castle on the castle wall on the way down and black out before you hit the ground with a sickening thud. Yeah, that's what happens if you go out the window that you didn't use the, the grappling hook on. Make sure you look at that first. It's kind of important. I did a bad job, I know. That was one of the dumbest deaths you can ever have in Shadowgate. Today, death has claimed a hero of the realm. Uh, no, he pretty much gave himself over to death willingly. After that stupidity. <laughs> Let's not do that again. Jumping out of a window. One of the many ways you can die in Dagger and Daggerfall. Not Daggerfall, in Shadowgate. 
I've been watching a Let's Play of Daggerfall, folks. My bad. Yep. Doing things what we like to call the right way. And here is another opportunity in the next area that we can die in. It seems to be a recurring theme, and it will continue to be a recurring theme. Taking a deep breath, you saunter across the drawbridge and enter the inner castle. As you enter the grand hallway, a goblin jumps from the shadows, surprising you with a war cry while you backpedal the beast tightens its grip on its weapon. I know what the barbarians out there are thinking. Again, use the weapon on the goblin, right? Right? With more speed than you thought possible, the goblin anticipates your move and brings down its wickedly pointed cudgel. The weapon penetrates deep into your brain and puts an end to your brief yet adventure-filled life. Nope. You gotta have a little more originality than that. Just a little more. So what are you supposed to do? Are you just screwed? No, you're not just screwed. I'll show you exactly how to get past that goblin. You gotta be a little more manly about it. What's more manly than swinging a dirk? Er. A look of surprise flits across the goblin's face as you throw a haymaker at its jaw. With a sickening crack, the goblin goes down like a sack of potatoes. You shake your hand and mutter in satisfaction. Didn't see that one coming, did you? The torch's flame momentarily flickers. Yes, that's what you gotta do. Just punch it in the face. Now an interesting thing, if you don't do anything here, that goblin will come back and you can, I think you can keep punching it. And I think the fifth time you punch it, you can get a key from it. The only reason I know this is because one time I went, does he keep coming back? And I kept going and kept doing and kept doing it and I looked and, you know, kept looking each time. And, well, you get, to, you get a key. I don't think it's important, but hey, you might want to get it if you want to experience everything. Do you, are you holding anything? You pat down the goblin and take an interesting crystal from its pocket. Okay. Probably important. Probably, you know. Okay, so. You can kill that goblin so it doesn't come back. Now you got to do the old-fashioned coup de gras. You deliver the coup de gras to the unconscious goblin, ending its life. It will never come back now. But you lose the key. But I don't really care about the key. It, does, it did take another turn, but oh well. We're gonna take the two torches. Just because they're there. I think on Apprentice there's four torches here. So you get a lot of torches there. Do we actually need that? The soiled and stained tunic is made from the skin of some long dead creature. I don't know if we need that. I'm going to take it. You put the goblin armor in your satchel. I think we want to go in here next. Go! I think that music means your torch is getting low. <laughs> you know, use one. But I like living dangerously. Let's see here. What should I... Oh wait, what oh, crap, what do you do here? This is about as far as I got. Hmm. Okay, so... Oh, wait. I have an idea. Because we... This is such a horrible stereotype, and I feel bad for perpetuating it, but... I think we're probably gonna want those glasses. Because I think I remember a library in the original Shadowgate, and you needed glasses to read one of the books, didn't you? Or am I just making that up? I, I don't remember. Anyway... You seem like this would break the glasses more than anything. Using the bar, you pry the glasses from the skull. Then use the... Gla Where's the glasses? Where are thine glasses? Oh, they're probably in the outfit. You put on the glasses. You're momentarily disoriented, but quickly regain your sense of balance. York lets out a burst of laughter. Oh, yes. I'm gonna guess take these books? I don't know. I'm, I'm flying blind, folks. So what does this one even say? Is it important, I wonder? You flip through the book, noting the pages are blank. Hmm. Well, there's your problem. I don't know, man.
Although you struggle with the poor pensmanship you read on, I am honored to have been selected by Fendril to document the workings of the Circle. The newest initiate is a young man with an inquisitive nature. He's taken the name of Blackmere and intends to study the origins of time. Although his mastery is yet to be chosen, the High One mentioned that Blackmere is not from his line and thus cannot be groomed to become lead of the Circle. Rather, the new initiate was chosen from an unorthodox scrying performed by Telomere. I do not trust that one. He has an ambition and a, and a hunger that does not sit well with a member of the Circle. Oh, wait. Crap. I think I picked up the wrong books. How about this book? Your paddler will be matching mine soon. Best to hurry up and find an antidote. Yes, I, I know that. Thank you very much for that. You're not helping, Yorick. You're just making me more nervous. Anyway, we're gonna put on our Vash the Stampede glasses, even though they're not really. They look somewhat well, similar, I don't know, maybe. Not that down. Look, book. The glasses bring the sentences into focus. One particular word stands out from the rest. Placklear. In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with power and quickly write down the strange marking in your spell book. You've learned to spell. Yes, folks, that was all just... Uh, what's the word? Intuition. I actually didn't expect the glasses would help, but... I might as well leave them on, right? Okay, so maybe the right book on the desk? Actually, what is the right book on the desk? This book is bound in pale white leather and secured with a lock metal strap. The name Laura is written on the spine. I just butchered that word. You put the book in your satchel, right? Well, was it smart to actually look at that? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's look around at this place a little bit. I just wanted to look. Seeing something strange, you step closer to the books on, the sh on these shelves. A series of shelves are cluttered with books of varying shapes, sizes, and colors. The accumulated knowledge in this place must be truly staggered. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. No, please. Not one of these puzzles. Oh, God. Okay. I'm not going to try and attempt this puzzle right now. This is as good a place as any to end this episode because Lord knows I'm going to need probably an hour to figure out this puzzle. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully I helped you in some way with Shadowgate on Master Difficulty. And as always guys, feel free to share on Twitter, Facebook, or whatever social media you use. And as always again, feel free to like or even subscribe for easier access to future content and videos. And hopefully I shall see you guys next time. Farewell everyone.